Welcome back everyone to Work and Energy and today we're going to be talking about more calculus based problems with this chapter. If you didn't watch the one with graphs before, I would highly suggest watching that first, but if you did, then uh, we're, let's talk about calculus. So let's look at this. Force with respect to position equals 3, I'm just going to say 3x squared plus 6x. What work is done by this force on a particle that moves from 0 to 2 meters? So, like we should have learned from the last chapter, the area under the curve will give us the work. So, the area under the curve is the same thing as the integral. So, the integral of force respect to position will give us work. Another thing that we should know is whenever we're multiplying, for example, force times distance, what this means is whenever we're multiplying, we should be using the integral function to figure it out. Whenever we're dividing, we should be using derivatives, okay? That's an easy way to know, oh, what do I use integral or do I use um, derivatives to figure this out? So now let's look at this. The integral of 3 with respect to position squared plus 6x. So if we find this integral, what we get is work, uh, is work with respect to position is equal to, oh, what is this equal to? <laughs> 3x cubed divided by 3, plus 6x squared divided by 2. And we're going to put the limits from 0 to 2. 0 is just 0, so now let's plug in 2. And we should get 20 joules. All right, moving on. All right, let's look at example 34. How much work is done by this force from 0 to 2.6 meters? So we have this, and again, finding the integral of this. And the integral of is going to be the work is going to three point seven three x three. So then this is going to be three point seven three x to the four divided by four limits zero to two point six. Let's find what this is going to be equal to. So let's just do two point six to the power of four times three point seven three divided by four, and we get is forty two point six joules of work. Yep, moving on. Okay, so this one's a bit more tricky. Uh, let me change my cursor real quick. So what we have is a person pushes a heavy box with a force of 60 newtons for 6.88 meters, then becomes tired. The force he exerts then starts to decrease linearly from 60 newtons to 0 newtons across the remaining 6.88 meters. How much total work did the person do on the box? Okay, so this might be a little bit confusing, but how I like to think about it is I like to think about it as a graph. So we have force on one side, we have position on the other side. So we know we're going to be using a force of 60 newtons, and we're going to be pushing it for 6.88 meters. Okay, it's pretty much just a uh, push, a constant 60 newton force. But then they say they get tired, and the next... Uh, 6.88, or let me do 6.88 plus 6.88, 6.88 plus 2, 13.76. So the next time we go another 6.88, uh, we start to get tired and go from 60 to 0 newtons in a linear function like this. So how much total work was done? What we should do is we should think of it like, uh, what should we think of it? We should think of it like, uh, like a graph and then find the area on the curve. So I'm just doing a 1. Base times height, 60 times 6.88. And then 2, we have, uh, it goes 1 half base, uh, which is going to be 6.88 times the height, which is 60. So now let's figure out what these both are. 60 times 6.88, 40, 112.8 joules. And the other one, 60 times 6.88 times 0.5. 206.4 joules. All right, so let's figure this out. Plus 4, 12. Four. So we get 619.2 joules. Okay, moving on. So it says, if the object has a mass of 7 kilograms and it's initially at rest, find the speed when it has moved 9 meters. All right, so let's look at this. What we're going to do is we're going to first find the work. So we know the integral. 6 minus 2x plus 6x squared. This is going to be equal to 6x minus 2x squared divided by 2 
plus 6x cubed divided by 3. Okay, and then we're going to put the limits to find the work done. Oh, wait, no, actually, they don't give us any limits. We're just going to find what the work is for this. Okay, so work is going to be equal, and I'm going to start from the right over here. So x, uh, what has moved 9 meters? Oh, sorry, uh, 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 9 meters. 9 to the power of 3 times 6 divided by 3 plus 9 by uh, square root, uh, AB1, um, minus 54. And we see we have a total work of 1485 joules. However, it says, what is the speed when it has moved 9 meters? So we should know the total work is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So we have 1485 is equal to 1 half mass 7 V squared minus 1 half M V initial, which is just 0. It starts from rest. Okay, so this is just 0. So now let's figure out what V is equal to. So I'm going to do times 2 divided by 7 square root. And we should get around 20.6 meters per second. Okay, 20.6 meters per second. All right, moving on. Okay, let's look at this example. Example 37. What is the potential energy function, potential energy with the function of position for this conservative force? Okay, so this is a little bit different, but we went over this with graphs, so hopefully this is okay. What we should remember is the integral of force with respect to position gives us work. What we should also know is this gives us the negative potential energy. We should know that the work being done on an object is equal to the negative potential energy. And let me try to explain this a little bit. So and anyway, just know this, but let me try to explain this a little bit. So if we had like a box, right, and we're, we're lifting this box up, I don't know, it's going over here or something like that, right? There's going to be a certain position it's going to go, and we're lifting this box up like a force applied here. However, what we know is gravity is going to be pulling it down like this. So even though we're doing work on this, the potential energy, the gravity, is going in the opposite direction. And what that does is that's providing negative work being done by gravity. So we see this potential energy here is negative. Uh, same thing if we look at a spring. So if we look at a spring over here, we have this spring here. And when, let's say we're compressing the spring to the left. So we put a force applied to the left, and it's also going to the left, right? What we know is the force of the spring is going to be going to the right. And again, it's going to be 180 degrees, meaning that the force of the spring, the force done by the spring, is going in the opposite direction of where it's, it's moving, and the work done by the spring, again, is going to be negative. So with this potential energy, what's happening is it's always going to be the negative with the work that's being done to it, whether that's gravity or the spring. Okay, Knowing that, let's try to solve something like this. So we should know force with respect to position. We're going to have this as 2x minus 3x cubed. This is going to give us the work function is going to give us 2x squared divided by 2 minus 3x to the fourth divided by 4. And now, since we're asking for the position as a function, uh, oh no, the potential energy as a function of position, we should know this is going to be negative x squared plus 3 fourth x to the fourth. Okay? All right, moving on. Negative uh, 4 newton per meter x plus 2 newton per meter uh, cubed x cubed. Uh, what is the change in uh, potential energy from 1 to 2 meters? Okay, so again, what we're going to do, we're going to find the integral of this, negative 4x plus 2x cubed. And then we'll find the integral of this, going to be negative 4x squared divided by 2 plus 2x to the fourth divided by 4. And then we're going to flip this, so this is going to be 2x squared plus 1 half, oh sorry, it should be minus 1 half, so I'm going to get rid of that, plus minus one half x to the fourth and put the limits from one to two okay so first we're going to do the two so we have two two squared minus one half x which is two to the fourth so that's our first limit minus our initial limit one so it's going to be two one squared minus one half one to the fourth and then let's see what this solves to be. Okay. 
So I'm just gonna do four. Come on. And then what we get is we get zero minus one point five, which will give us negative one point five joules. All right, moving on. Okay, it says u with respect to position equal to 3x minus 3x cubed. At what position or position is the force equal to zero? Okay, interesting. So again, what we should know if if the integral of force with respect to position is equal to negative u, with respect to position here, what we should know is u with respect to position, the derivative of that is going to be equal to the force with respect to the position negative. Okay? So let's find the derivative of this. So we have u with respect to position is equal to 3x minus 1x cubed. And then finding the derivative of that is going to give us uh, 3 minus 3x squared. And then we should know that the force with respect to position is going to be the opposite of this. So negative 3 minus 3x squared. And oh, so this plus, sorry, plus 3x squared. And so at what position or position is the force equal to zero? So we know at when position is equal to one meter, it is equal to zero, okay? One and negative one meter. Whoops, yeah, I should have negative one, okay? That is when it is equal to zero. Okay, so moving on here. Suppose the particle is one kilogram and moving with a speed of three meters per second when it's at location one meter. What is the speed of the object when it is located at a uh, position equals 5 meters? Okay, so what we know is we have this u as respect to position. And we want let's find what u is at 1 meter. Okay, at 1 meter, we, uh, we have negative 2 divided by 1 plus 4 divided by 1 squared. And let's see what this gives us. Uh, negative 2 plus 4 so looks to be negative. Oh, no, it's going to be 2 joules. And then we know at this point also, let me make an underline here. Uh, the particle is moving with the speed of 3 meters per second. So we know the kinetic energy is going to be equal to 1 half m, which is 1, v, which is 3 squared. And this is going to equal 9 plus 0.5, so 4.5. So the total energy is going to be 2 plus 4.5, which is going to be 6.5 joules. So let's look at position 5. So when this is u, back to position 5, negative 2 divided by x, which is 5, uh, plus 4, back to 5 squared. And let's see what this gives us. 4 divided by 5 squared plus negative 2 divided by 5 and we get around negative 0.24 joules and the kinetic energy is going to be equal to 1 half m uh, mass is still 1 and velocity is what we're looking for v squared so we don't know what kinetic energy is but we know the total energy is to equal 6.5 joules and if we know potential energy is negative 0.24 joules that means that with this kinetic energy should be 6 0.74 joules. Knowing that, let's do some math. 6.74 uh, times 2, square root of that. And we get velocity is equal to 3.67 meters per second. Okay, and I should square that. All right, and that's pretty much it. I hope that made sense. A key thing I want to go over, whenever you're multiplying, find the area on the curve, you're using the integral. Whenever you are dividing, whenever you're finding the slope, uh, then what you're doing is you are finding uh, the derivative, okay? So derivative, the slope there. <laughs> okay, so you're doing the derivative of that. All right, guys, thanks for watching, and we'll do more next.